So, what are we thinking about when we talk about sufficiency, speculative sufficiency? People will say, speculation is precisely about opening thought up endlessly. It opens thought to where women are not. Our people, people ancient, ancient women philosophers, are strangers. strangers. Will we'll always be strangers, strangers to this sufficiency. sufficiency. They are prisoners to this logic that continues continues to slaughter them one by one, one, burying them in premature graves, graves, burning them at the stake over and over again. Speculative sufficiency is thinking that thought can achieve something by invention that escapes prosecution for this murder. murder. If speculative sufficiency is the name of philosophy murder, Philosophy in the wild attunes itself to the occluded rhythm of the real. And sometimes this rhythm is punctuated by the voices of dead women buried under our feet. So, so philosophy, philosophy in the, in the wild asks not, how do, how do we represent those voices, those voices? But how do we give but our, how do we give our vocal cords to them in an act of predatory naivety? I give these vocal cords to you without asking how you're going to use them exactly. But the buried people need to be protected from the attempts, from the attempts to capture, capture and over-determine them, them and kill them once, kill them once more. Speculative sufficiency, Speculative sufficiency is like placing these women philosophers, these women philosophers on a medieval torture, on medieval torture machine, machine, spitting in their face, in asking, their face, them, to asking their them to confess their true Philosophy nature. Is like a vulture seeking philosophy is like a vulture seeking to nourish itself on the body that it tears So philosophy in the wild is also about providing a new so optics, philosophy in the wild a new spatial is also optics about in the wild, a new territory which can also be a refuge. In this way, it is not about speculating who these women philosophers in this were or are going it's to be, not about speculating but creating a better place for them. Women, women are not this tabula rasa for your philosophy to fill with whatever speculation. Women are not we are this here already. Rasa for your it is the environment that sucks whatever that needs to be changed. We are already here. It is the environment that sucks. It needs to be changed. Paternity is presented as philosophy and as the origin of humanity as we know it. Both humanity and philosophy were born of women's labor, but held in the name of men. Make philosophy great again. This is speculative sufficiency. Father and philosophers are the last to know, but they invent an elaborative narrative to cast the offspring in their name. Speculative sufficiency is a projection into the future post factum, based on the projective knowledge of eternity, origin, or the philosophical decision. And if this philosophy is unfair, change it, mutate it, take it back where it belongs, put it in its place. If it's civilized, rewild it, take philosophy back from philosophy. So what we're doing, as we're walking here in this darkness, is we're moving the field, literally tracing with our steps this removal of what is perceived as sufficient in speculation. We place ourselves as women philosophers in the wild, where philosophy cannot access. Philosophy thinks we are wild, but what we are is heretics in a field. 
It is a non-metaphorical wild as a wild kernel. This wild is not outside of philosophy. Philosophy is not safe from it. This is not a periphery, but a rewilding of the whole field. And philosophy as we want it is a wild object. It is not defined by this androcentric fidelity, but stays in the darkness, listening to the occluded sound of the real. We can say that the darkness of this island is like a distorted Plato's cave. Plato said that women were not human, that women had no soul. He handed us a poisoned apple, just like in Eden. Here's this apple of knowledge, you want it because you women are the first philosophers, but once you reach for it, philosophy is recast in the name of men who have nothing, they only have the sufficiency of naming. But there is also the snake, the snake in the cave and in the garden, the snake hands us venom, a venomous serpent philosophy that could be a wild philosophy. Both, Both the distorted cave of Plato, where women are not pure humanity, and the garden, where women are punished for seeking knowledge, need to be recast as wild moments of zero relation of women to philosophy. Philosophy in the wild should be an integration, rather than a synthesis. What's the difference? What's the difference? Synthesis seeks to overdetermine, but integration does not fool itself in seeking unity where there is none. In a multiple world that perpetually scatters itself into diverse ontologies, a synthesis of epistemologies is a dream tinted with nightmarish undertones. Right, but once you establish borders, you create maps. Once you give examples, you nominate targets. A threshold is not a border, it prevents the synthesis that maps allow. A wild threshold is not a synthesis of all existing discourses and contexts of the threshold. Because it is wild, it can move like a snake. It allows a hold of all those things locked in a predatory mimesis. A poor snake woman is the threshold of philosophy in the wild.
I was thinking about how there are poisonous snakes on this island, and it's difficult to not think about the garden. What would it mean to have a venomous wild philosophy? What interests you about it, about poison? Is it that it kills you or that it spreads? It's that it's in you already. No speculation. Poison is imminent. It has already happened in you. Accepting this venom, this wild serpent philosophy is also accepting that we need to use it, externalize it. You are not a predator and a venomous snake for nothing. Can a snake poison itself? Technically it can, but it's okay. Because a snake can still bite you and poison you after its head has been cut off for 20 minutes. Yeah, and, and for, for philosophy, philosophy androcentric philosophy, philosophy, snakes are not scary because they are venomous. They are scary because they offer women knowledge, because, because they, they ask, do you want this apple? It is not about the poison, unless the poison is the Xeno relation of snake to women to philosophy. Women philosophers have never seen the light. Let there be light is not what it is about for us. Instead, we meet the snake. So let there be venom. Envenomment, not enlightenment. This venomous apple establishes us as predators. It is a gateway to a wild philosophy where women philosophers can be protected from sufficiency, and where entropy can be reversed.